Time now, I saw that the potential that is in modern beekeeping, mm -hmm. that it's not only about the honey. It's all about uh, uh, honey is of the largest production, yes. but of the lowest value. Mm -hmm. Now there's the pollen, there's the propolis, there's the royal jelly, there's the venom, there's the wax. And that's what actually prompted me to resign. And why I resigned actually was that uh, mm -hmm. we got... Uh, the demand for these products was getting higher than the way we could, uh, I, could, I, could, I could deliver. Mm -hmm. And so now we are now to find a system of getting uh, more farmers. We contract them so that we can meet the demand for this particular, particular uh, you know, buyer. Mm -hmm. And so through that, uh, now we, we went ahead now to, to have now registered Savannah Honey. And for the last 10 years, we have been handling the entire beekeeping value chain. Okay. That includes all the equipment, uh, the delivery, the installation. Actually, somebody buying equipment from us doesn't need to come for them from, uh, from the office. Mm -hmm. Us who deliver, we just will go ahead to have them delivered by an apiarist. There's somebody who knows the, you know, what we call citation, mm -hmm. who come there, do citation, place the beehive the way it's supposed to be. You know, many people think the beehive, we just place it anyway until you get the bees. Mm -hmm. But our hanapiaris will come, look at the direction of the wind, and now place it in a way that it will attract the bees very fast. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, of course, our hives are already treated to mean that they will just attract the bees very fast. And now more to that, we are also now uh, offering technical support, meaning that we don't just sell the hive and that's the end of it. We would sell you the hive, fall on it to ensure that it's colonized. And if any hive is not colonized within 90 days, mm -hmm. we'd be able to do to you what we call uh, colon division. This is a new technique nowadays of making a new queen. Uh, when a hive delays to get bees, yet when we are just, uh, instead of just saying we are, we, are, we are waiting on God, when we are still waiting on God to bring bees, we go ahead now to make, to make a queen. Mm -hmm. And uh, to make a queen in Kenya is around 9,000. But now for Savannah honey clients, it's free of charge. Again, we go ahead now to look at the strength of your colony. Uh, that, that beehive, how, how, how many bee, bees you have. Because many times you see a client having their hives, uh, he, he has got, say, 10 hives. He went harvesting. Then he tells you, I just got three ready or five mm -hmm. ready. Mm -hmm. The others were not ready because of the number of the workers. Because a hive should have between 60,000 to 90,000 bees. Mm -hmm. Anytime your hive has got less than 30,000 bees, then we say that colon is very weak. And I will come and do for you what we call uh, colony strengthening. All right. Uh, hold it right there. Right. Let me take you back a little bit before yes. we get so much deep into this. Yes. So now when you look at um, the structure of the hive and when you look at uh, the environment under which the bees are supposed to be kept. Right. Explain to us what goes into that. Uh, can you come to a place, any, any place, and yes. say, okay, this is where I want to set up uh, my hive. Like today, where we are sitting, yes. can you just come and say, okay, this environment looks good. It has uh, leaves, it has uh, some flowers. I can set my hive here. So what goes into um, a farmer? Because a farmer watching would say, okay, so what goes into me looking at the environment, yes. saying this is the right place to um, make sure that my hives thrive in this place. Yeah, the most important thing and what we advise our farmers is just to ensure that it's, it's, it's an environment that uh, the hives will not, be, uh, you, you know, will not be interfered with by anything. And our, what we advise our farmers uh, most of the time is that even if they don't have a, a, a big farm, a big shamba, let them have the hives, but then put them in a, in a corner or in a place and then they, they, they enclose them, mm -hmm. either with used mabati, uh, hoof cuts, or anything that will ensure that goats, uh, cows, children are not just intruding. Mm. And um, uh, you see, the beautiful thing is that uh, bees uh, travel four kilometers radius for forage. Meaning, even if you have got a small farm, there's no problem. Because bees will go to your neighbor's farms and collect nectar. Yes. And therefore, uh, most of the time we don't regard the size of the farm. We don't regard uh, whether it's dry or whether you've planted trees or not. 
Why? Because these bees will get forage from all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. And also, now, let's look at uh, this other side of yes. uh, keeping bees and yes. um, not necessarily uh, depending on the honey. Yes. You're depending on the propolis. You're depending on the pollen. Yes. How is it... Um, can, uh, how, what goes into this? How right. does a farmer prepare themselves for this? Okay. And you, you want to convince a farmer, okay, you will keep bees, but don't focus on the honey. The honey is there, yes, but now focus on this other side. Yes. Mm. Uh, what we have done, we have uh, managed to have many of our farmers know that it's not only about honey. And also what we have done on that is uh, to ensure that they get the right, we, we train them. And uh, this is after now somebody has bought the equipment from us, we now give them a contract for five years. We contract them for five years, that mm -hmm. in the five years, they will have all the technical support services free of charge. Mm -hmm. Then, again, more to that, we will, of course, give them all the training. Uh, for instance, now, uh, many farmers w w don't know anything about bee pollen, don't know anything about propolis yes. and all these other products. So it is our duty to train them on their farms free of charge on how to do it. Mm -hmm. And actually how we do it is that uh, all the harvests for the first time, we do it free of charge. Uh, or the harvest for honey, for the pollen and all that, so that we can train their client or their guys, or the guy who wants all the beehives. And as a result of that, you, you realize that now they pick the skills, then they continue very comfortably for five years, has buying from them. Mm. And if I could mention, I think it's good for me to mention, mm -hmm. that um, we, we have uh, our contracted farmers who now... Uh, Get now, we get now the honey from them, if I could start from the honey. And uh, just to make it uh, for them now to see it very clearly, we are using now what we call the Langstroth beehive. Mm -hmm. I think I can start from there. Yes. Now, we are using what you are calling the Langstroth hive. Which is this? The, this one yes. now. Yes. Now, the Langstroth hive has got an advantage that it has got two boxes, as mm -hmm. you can see. Yes. And uh, it is separated in between by what we call a queen excluder. This could be um, a wire mesh, could be steel mesh, or could even be plastic mesh like mm -hmm. what we have here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the beauty about having the two boxes is to avoid the four main challenges that affect the beekeepers in the traditional beekeeping. Which, when you are using a log hive, just the, the, the local beehive in yes. the village. Mm -hmm. Yes, the local beehive in the village has got four main challenges. Mm -hmm. I think I could start from there. So yeah, to start from there because yes. I was about to ask. So yes. when it comes to the, the rural areas, because yes. people would use the log uh, hive. hive. Yes. So how do they go about it? Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the log hive has got four main challenges. Yes. That for you to get honey, you must get your knife and cut the combs. Mm -hmm. When you cut the combs, you must crush them for you to get the honey. The challenge is that uh, when you cut the combs, Bees must come again and start from square zero. Yes. And it takes 10 times the time it takes to make honey, it takes 10 times to make combs. Mm. And what it means is that uh, wastage of time. And then number two, uh, the main challenge again is that when you are crushing the combs, chances are 99% that you will kill the queen. Mm. When you kill the queen, the challenge number three is that the bees must have scored. Yes. You see, bees don't so stay you, anywhere. Yes. Where so you still no have to go back and start from scratch. Well, you start from scratch. Mm. And the bad thing about it is that uh, you must wait for the next swarming season for other bees now to come in. And actually what happens now is that you end up now harvesting only once, or actually once in a year, which now makes many people not look at it like business. You see, you have waited for the whole year, and now you have just the, the kilo, few kilograms that you have got. Yes. You feel so happy that you want to celebrate. And so what you do, you give it to your neighbors, you give it to your friends, and whatever remains in the village, if it's in the village, the whatever remains, you make a local brew, and the whole village <laughs> celebrates. <laughs> yes. So in essence, you don't make money. Mm. Yeah, but now the beauty about this one, the Langstroth Hive, it beats the four main challenges. Mm. Like number one, it is separated by the, 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 the two boxes are separated by the queen excluder, which uh, allows the bees work from the lower chamber, what we call the brooder, mm -hmm. and they go up. The queen excluder can allow the bees go up, and they fill also the frames, the, the bars inside the bee, I mean the beehive. But now, 
the queen will not go up. And the beauty of the queen not going up is that when you come harvesting, you just harvest only the upper box. You don't harvest the lower box. Okay, so the lower one is left for the queen. For the queen. Okay. Meaning you don't kill the queen. Mm. Look at that. And then number two, the honey that is in the lower box, it is their food. Meaning when you harvest today, they will still come and find their food intact. Mm -hmm. So they don't need to waste time looking for food. And then number three, when you come now harvesting, you just get the frames. And when you get the frames, you don't crush them or cut the combs like you do in the traditional hive. Mm -hmm. Now you pick the frames and you put in the honey extractor. Right. When you put the frames in the honey extractor, mm -hmm. when you put the frames in the honey extractor, then you will rotate the frames. So the rotation, the rotation will bring out the honey. That's it. Meaning now oh. you don't crush the combs. Look at that. Oh. You don't crush the combs. Mm -hmm. Meaning you return them back. And then what we mean is that bees will come and find that the honey is not there, mm -hmm. but the combs are just intact. They just fill them immediately. And can you increase, like, w w for example, when, when you're... We're rotating. You're rotating. Yes. The more you increase the speed... The, the faster... The faster is... The, the honey comes out. Uh -huh. And then using now the lower part, which we have the... Uh, now you put your, 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 you know, your container down here, yes. your bucket. Yes. And then you open it, and the honey now pours in your bucket. Wow. At that time, you have been on your, on your bee suit. Mm. Of course, you have been on your bee suit. Yes. And what it means with your bee suit is that you are fully protected. Yes. Then you are also on your gloves. Mm -hmm. All right. And one more question about this. Yes, please. Um, how does this plastic help? Um, can you use metal? Can you use, uh, maybe, maybe someone can say, I can use a log and then put these things inside. <laughs> so uh, what is the essence of having the, 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 the plastic? The, 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 the many times people have been using uh, a stainless steel one. Mm -hmm. It is what mainly is in the market. Yes. And, uh, but now nowadays the innovation has brought about the plastic one. The plastic one has got several advantages. Mm -hmm. One is very light to handle, meaning you can handle even if even your, your farm is big and your hives are down there in the farm, you can easily carry it and handle it comfortably. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's not corrosive, meaning the honey will be very, you know, very pure. Yes. And number three, which is more important, is that this one is very cheap. It will function 100% more or less in terms of the functionality, like the, 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 the steel one, stainless steel one, mm. only that now it's friendly to the pockets they, uh, that is it now <laughs> yes okay. uh, because uh what we have for the for the for the for the stainless steel one will go for around thirty five thousand shillings. Mm -hmm. now this one uh we now have it uh on offer at twenty two thousand ah. so you see there is a huge okay. huge difference there's a difference yes all right yes and now um since now we are getting into the conversation about how we extract the things, because yes. we have very many equipments here, yes. do bees pass through <laughs> these spaces? What usually yes. happens? Now, this is the propolis collector. Mm -hmm. This is the propolis collector. Yes. And uh, uh, when, we want, when we now want to harvest propolis, you would get the, the beehive the way it is. Mm -hmm. You would open the lid. The lid. And when you have opened the lid, you would get now a plywood, just a normal plywood. Yes. The same size with the lid. The, this lead. Yeah, the other lead. Yes. And put it, then you cover. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're trying to do, you want to play with the psychology of the bee in relation to temperature. The extra plywood increases the temperature in the hive. Mm. And then you give it 14 days, you come and remove the lead, remove the plywood, then now you introduce this. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. and then you cover again with a lid. When you when you do that, bees come and realize that the temperature has changed. Changed, yes, yes. And when they notice that it has changed, they will be like, "Oh, what has made the beehive become cooler?" So they will go up, and when they they see these holes, they will say, "Somebody has come and has destroyed the beehive." <laughs> so they they'll try to fill the spaces. The spaces now because now all the attention now will be put on how to reduce the coldness. Or rather wow. to finish the coldness. They mm. will stop making honey, concentrate on this. Now, propolis is what normally they normally use to seal cracks in even a traditional beehive. Mm. When a traditional beehive or no more hive cracks, they go to the forest, they get the trees up, and they feel uh, that they now make the propolis 
they now make the propolis to, to, to seal the, 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 the cracks. But in this case now, when now they will go now have there and they, they see the cracks, then they will say somebody has destroyed the beehive. And now they concentrate on filling. And mm -hmm. what will happen? They pick each as a crack. So they don't feel horizontally. Yes. They feel vertically. Wow. Each. And after 14 days, they will have filled something like a, one inch all through. Wow. Then you come, you get what we call a scrapper, mm -hmm. and now you scrap. Now, when you scrap, is when now you get now, now, now the, the, the propolis now, and uh, like for example, what I'm having here. So this is the propolis? This is the propolis. Okay. Now, propolis had been used many years uh, to treat any, any challenge, any respiratory challenge. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the village and you visit somebody who has been doing beekeeping, Many a times, when you tell him you are coughing or you have got some calls, he would give you a small bit of it to twitch you. Mm -hmm. And within 30 or so minutes, you're, you're, you're well. Okay. And, uh, All right. Yeah. right. Let me just hold you right there. Right. We need to go for a short break. Right. But when we come back, um, Charlo will continue explaining to us about the propolis and how these other products come in. And also, we have, we have very interesting... Uh, equipment over here. We'll get to know what it's all about. So we're going to go for a short break. Don't go too far. Remember, we are coming back with more uh, with Kialo on just how these other products from beekeeping help us in the society. Don't go too far.